Hello students, hope you are all doing good. Yes, once again welcome back to our biology class. Myself Dr. Ravindra here. So, we are dealing with the chapter biomolecules. And in this chapter we are, yes, into the last segment. That is basically we are discussing about the enzymes. In the last class, we studied about the properties of enzymes, right? Enzymes are basically, these are the most important uh, biomolecules they are also called as a catalyst so they catalyze lots of biochemical reactions they may be the linear biochemical pathways or they may be cyclic pathways it may be glycolysis or it may be Krebs cycle it may be ETS or it may be ornithine cycle any biochemical activity you take or you talk it's all about the activity of the enzymes that enzyme is very very essential to catalyze any kind of biochemical reaction and these enzymes are basically made up of amino acids yes enzymes are by nature they are chemically proteins and proteins are made up of the long chain of amino acids we call it as yes the amino acids linked to one another by the peptide bonds and such a long chain of amino acids is known as a polypeptide chain fine so we have discussed about the uh, enzymes are basically definitely they are the proteins but sometimes they may be nucleic acids also they are called as uh, ribozymes fine so thus the enzymes are most important and essential to uh, regulate homeostasis what is the homeostasis maintenance of the optimum range of all these biomolecules level so the cell can tolerate their concentration, the cell can utilize them very effectively, the cell can survive, the cell can grow, the cell can reproduce. So all these, yes, important mainly happens because of the presence of enzymes what we have discussed. Enzymes can catalyze the reactions and several times, maybe hundred times or maybe the millions of times presence of enzymes catalyze the reaction very well so we have studied about all the important basic properties of the enzymes and enzymes are basically heat sensitive ph sensitive their activity definitely will go very high only at the optimum range beyond the optimum range so enzymes may become denatured or inactive also so enzymes cannot act at a very low temperature so enzyme activity is arrested we can say that the enzymes are now preserved or enzymes are being may be inactivated at a particular low temperature so no biochemical activity will happen the food will not spoil that's why we keep the food in the fridge okay well so lots of things yes we have discussed about the enzymes in our earlier class and we now we need to understand yes the properties of enzymes we have discussed let us go ahead in the today's class regarding the rate of a biochemical reaction with the presence of enzymes so let us understand now the rate of a reaction so when we talk about the rate of reaction catalyzed by the enzymes right so when we talk about the reactions, reactions are of various type. Let me tell you reactions as such. When we talk about reactions, they can be physical. So physical reactions. So simple example I will give you here. Ice, which is the solid form of the water. It undergo process of melting. Then it forms the water. Water undergo the process of boiling. Boiling. So then it becomes the water vapors. Water vapors. So these water vapors can form the cloud also. This is what we talk about the physical reactions. Now, when you say the chemical reactions are of various type, what they are? Chemical reactions, let us consider chemical reactions can be. We can say that they can be uh, inorganic, inorganic where carbon is not there, yes, inorganic chemical reactions, they may be organic, 
organic chemical reactions they can be catalyzed catalyzed reactions with the presence of enzymes they may be uncatalyzed uncatalyzed reactions yes where high temperature pressure is required to run that chemical reaction uncatalyzed they can be exothermic they can be endothermic so various kind of chemical reactions we can find so inorganic as such let me tell you without the presence of enzymes also the me or, or without the presence of the carbon there is a biochemical reaction that can be carried out so to say that inorganic a simple example i want to quote here such as barium so barium oh2 dihydroxide plus h2so4 that can form mainly barium sulfate plus it can form mainly 2 h2o so it is a simple example of what we can say inorganic reaction so when we talk about organic reaction such as for the organic reaction starch starch is getting converted into glucose okay so this is an organic biochemical reaction so biochemical reactions can be inorganic as well as organic so when we talk about catalyzed enzymes mainly in the presence of enzymes in the presence in the presence of enzymes the chemical reactions are catalyzed so in the absence of enzymes in the absence of enzymes uncatalyzed reactions can possible with we can say that under under high pressure under high pressure and temperature yes a chemical reaction can possible like this also without any enzymes exothermic definitely we can say that exothermic yes the reactions reactions doesn't require energy doesn't require energy okay it is inside energy releasing energy refers to here what it can be yes inside the cell energy means adenosine triphosphate adp so endothermic yes we can say that energy consuming consuming reactions so biochemical reactions can be of various type so as such we do lots of physical activities right we lift the object we run we walk we swim we dance so all these physical activities or physical yes energy from where we get inside the cell when the cell carry over lots of biochemical pathways ultimately releasing the atp and that energy molecule is when utilized by the cells then the tissues gain the energy then organ gain the energy whole body is filled with the energy with that we do the activities or physical activities are carried over so now when you are talking about the rate of reaction yes how it can be measured the rate of reaction can be measured like this when we say that uh, the rate of reaction rate of reaction the rate of reaction can be measured as such delta p by delta t what is this uh, delta p and delta t that means p refers to the product and t refers to unit time unit time so the rate of reaction is basically yes it is a measure of amount of yes rate of reaction let me tell you rate of reaction is the measure measure of amount of product amount of product product 
produced produced for given unit of time unit of time that's why it is called as mainly the rate of reaction so any chemical reaction need to happen means uh, glucose has to be broken up and then it has to be forming a lots of atp molecules it has to end up with by formation of what we can say mainly the uh, two pyruvic acid molecules yes so how many glucose are utilized to produce uh, these many number of uh, what you can say atp molecules or the energy or how much product is formed by mainly breaking the particular kind of substrate all that is yes measured as the rate of reaction delta p by delta t refers to the amount of product is synthesized or produced per given unit of time that is called as delta t this is what we say mainly the rate of reaction i hope you got an idea enzymes are most important biocatalyst what they do biocatalyst mainly catalyze the reactions where the reactions can be inorganic simple example i have mentioned here barium dihydroxide plus h2so4 when combined it may become barium sulfate with the release of yes water so it is a kind of what we can say the hydrolysis reaction hydrolysis we can say so removal of the water group okay and then so it can be organic reactions yes every cell metabolic pathway inside the cell that happens yes mainly the compounds which are made up of carbon yes when they are broken up and by releasing the energy yes we call them as the organic biochemical reactions so starch is converted into glucose or glucose is getting converted into some more other products all that is what we call as the mainly organic reactions catalyzed reactions yes with the presence of enzymes and catalyzed reactions also possible when there is a high pressure as well as temperature is there to run that reaction more energy is utilized over there that is called the uncatalyzed reactions so exothermic reactions yes whatever happens inside the body and then your energy is released in the form of our heat so exothermic energy so it doesn't require any kind of energy for itself it releases the energy whereas endothermic means inside the body yes something need to be happen so that time it requires the energy and that is mainly energy consuming reaction endothermic so rate of reaction is mainly denoted as delta p by delta t p refers to be the product t refers to be the unit time amount of product produced per unit given time that is called as the mainly measure of rate of reactions well so these we have understood let us mainly when we talk about physical means yes it is happening in the nature every now and then ice mainly melt in forming the water then water keep on boiling and then water vapors are formed this is all physical but remaining all what happens inside the organism or in the nature there are all the the chemical reactions and chemical reactions are of various type what we have seen over here now let us go ahead further the importance of uh, mainly enzyme as such so enzyme can catalyze various kind of uh, metabolic activities and then the product can be also very high in the presence of enzyme in the absence of enzyme yes the product produced for given time will be very low so let us understand importance of the enzyme so in our every living cell yes every living cell requires what it requires oxygen it requires the water so even carbon dioxide also formed as a result of various kind of metabolic activities so how the living cell manages the presence of co2 as well as the water let me tell you yes so inside the cell we have the co2 plus we have the water so the co2 plus h2o will form h2co3 yes it is interconvertible reaction and so this reaction is catalyzed by carbonic enzyme called as carbonic anhydrase carbonic anhydrase enzyme catalyze this reaction so h2co3 what it is it is a carbonic acid so carbonic acid is formed every now and then and that 
H2CO3 further it can be broken up into H2O and CO2 also. Yes. So this is keep on happening every now and then. So let me tell you, in the absence of enzyme, in the absence of enzyme, only yes, you need to understand the word only. Only 200 molecules of H2CO3 are formed. Okay, per hour. So, in, in one hour, only 200 molecules of H2CO3 are formed. Yes, so this is the condition. But in the presence of enzyme, in the presence of in the presence of carbonic anhydrase carbonic anhydrase it is an important enzyme carbonic anhydrase yes 6 lakh we can say that 6 lakh molecules of H2CO3 are formed Per second, per second, this is very very important and essential to understand. Means the presence of enzymes such as the carbonic anhydrase can catalyze a biochemical reaction within the cell, such as a formation of hardly as 200 molecules without enzyme, but with the enzyme it can go up to as high as 6 lakh molecules of H2CO3 that to per second. That means, thus, thus enzyme accelerates biochemical reactions, biochemical reaction 10 million times high. So that's why presence of enzyme very very essential. I hope you got this now. Now the enzymes are very very essential to mainly conduct or regulate metabolic pathways. So a simple glucose molecule can be converted into various kind of substances. Right? So let us understand the role of enzyme whether how they will deal with the aerobic as well as the anaerobic conditions. So, enzymes catalyze the reaction. Enzymes catalyze catalyze biochemical reactions. Biochemical reactions under aerobic as well as anaerobic under aerobic means in the presence of oxygen and anaerobic conditions and aerobic conditions yes you need to understand so glucose is a substrate now a single type of or simple type of substrate glucose right so this glucose can be converted into yes to pyruvate or pyruvic acid so this happens only in the aerobic condition aerobic condition okay in every living cell glucose can be broken up and resulting into two pyruvate molecules of two pyruvic acid and with the release of energy, ATP is released definitely. So, in most of the living cell, it is an aerobic condition. But, anaerobic also can be possible. Under anaerobic. An aerobic condition, it can be converted into lactic acid. Lactic acid in muscle cells. Yes, we do lots of exercise in the gym and we strain ourselves yes we keep on consuming more and more amount of glucose 
but for the breaking of the glucose there is no sufficient oxygen available now in the muscle but now muscle will switch on to the anaerobic respiration thus still at that time also glucose is broken and energy is released and ultimately it leads to formation of lactic acid in the muscle cells when lactic acid accumulate more in the muscles yes that gives the muscle pain or burning sensation okay well that is the anaerobic condition now one more kind of anaerobic condition yes so anaerobic condition and it can be also called as fermentation so fermentation in yeast that leads to formation of ethanol okay so thus anaerobic fermentation in the yeast cell that can form the ethanol thus mainly the enzymes can catalyze the most of the biochemical pathways that may be the linear or cyclic it may be aerobic or anaerobic yes definitely they do their work this is what we talk about all the rate of reaction yes it depends on conversion of a substrate into a product right so now glucose is a substrate but the product can be pyruvic acid product can be lactic acid the product can be ethanol or alcohol also yes so thus we can say that uh, the rate of reaction depends on the amount of uh, whatever the mean product is produced per given time or unit of a time this is what we say mainly the rate of reaction in related to this yes one more important concept is yes, we need to understand what it is called as the concept of activation energy let us go ahead now the concept of activation energy so rate of reaction yes we have discussed now now let us understand the concept of what we call as activation energy so what is this activation energy yes as such main function of enzymes mainly to convert what we can say mainly the product sorry the substrate into a product so all the enzymes are meant for conversion of substrate into product but the amount of product synthesized in a given time yes and amount of energy consumed for the making of that product is very very important let us understand that now so now when we talk about yes the concept of activation energy activation energy so how the activation energy can be studied let me plot a simple graph over here so the y axis always standing x always sleeping okay now here we say that the progression of reaction x axis represents progression of a reaction and y axis represents potential energy amount of energy required or potential energy fine so here it can be as measured like this so let me put a line it will be here is very nice so here it is a curve that is mainly representing substrate substrate yes getting converted into product p product p okay so here a phase in which the substrate is getting converted into product that is called as a transition state transition state now what you are observing it is a simple curve that represents mainly conversion of a substrate further in the formation of a product so the height of this peak yes the height of this peak represents the amount because potential energy is here in the y axis and we get a proper measure of that required energy we call it as mainly 
एक्टिवेशन एनर्जी एक्टिवेशन एनर्जी ओके यस एक्टिवेशन एनर्जी इन द एब्सेंस ऑफ इन द एब्सेंस ऑफ एंजाइम नाउ वी हैव ए एंजाइम द सेम अमाउंट ऑफ सब्सट्रेट इज फर्दर कन्वर्टेड इनटू ए प्रोडक्ट एट द सेम टाइम सो नाउ व्हाट इज दिस इट इज द अमाउंट ऑफ एनर्जी so activation energy required very less activation energy in the presence of in the presence of enzyme so what it says the same amount of substrate is getting converted into the product and then yes amount of energy activation energy required is very less when compared with the in the absence of enzyme thus what it says so the concept of activation energy says that presence of enzyme yes presence of enzyme accelerate the rate of reaction and also reduces the amount of energy required for the conversion of a substrate into product so thus enzymes are very very essential and important let me just give you the conclusion the activation energy concept says that so first we need to know what is this transition state let me mention here transition state transition state it is the phase of it is the phase of conversion of conversion of substrate to product so at this phase lots of yes biochemical changes will be happening means the structural changes changes occurring in substrate caused by enzyme to convert it into it into product so during this state during this state what is this or transition state that mentions during this uh, transition state during this transition state yes various chemical bonds broken and rearrange that's why it's called transition state and what happens now here so presence of enzyme reduces the amount of energy required for the conversion of product uh, sorry substrate into product so you can say that enzyme reduces energy required to convert substrate to product substrate into product and enzyme accelerate accelerates the rate of biochemical reaction rate of biochemical reaction this is what happens basically when you are talking all about activation energy so i hope 
you got an clarity about this activation energy is a amount of energy required to convert a substrate into product imagine it is a glucose what the product will be yes it may be the lactic acid it may be the pyruvic acid it may be the ethanol anything so substrate getting into convert into product but at the particular transition state this is very very essential during which breaking and reforming of the bonds will happen then the biomolecules are rearranged properly compounds are now changed that's why it's called as a transition state so thus the enzyme present that reduces the required amount of energy in the absence amount of energy required is very high and the transition state i hope you got a clarity it is the state in which the substrate is getting converted into product by undergoing lots of changes in its chemical structure and breaking and reforming of the bonds that's why the substrate become a product later so this is all what we talk about the the activation energy concept so i hope in this class we have discussed very well regarding the activation energy as well as yes we have discussed mainly about the what we can say the concepts of mainly activation energy well so in the next class yes we will be discussing about the kind of mainly we have discussed the type of reactions catalyzed by enzymes and as well as activation energy in the next class we will be discussing about mainly nature of the biochemical reactions catalyzed by the enzyme till then take care study well thank you very much